All right. Hello, and a very good afternoon to all of you who's here with us today. Let me welcome all of you lovely people from all time zones, different parts of India and the world in your pajamas and probably your best suit in the cafe or on the go at work, anywhere at all. We are thrilled that you are here and we sincerely hope that you join us for these two days that lie ahead. This little tradition, a step in the wider horizon, MUG 2019, which is short for Manipal Urogynecology Course 2019, that materialized last year and became as grand as it did academically and on a personal level for the organizing team as well, is all set and raring to go once again. This is a one of a kind virtual, come, one virtual conference, come interactive training session, come a true fest, which makes us gain a very relevant and updated insight into female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. It is a branch with tremendous potential and an immeasurably vast scope. It's bluntly surprising that it, has, it hasn't become as commonplace as it should have become by now. However, we are here to change all of that in as small or as big a way as we can. Last year, our theme was more generalized and was more about orienting us to the field, more like the first look of a very, very long web series. But this year, we are going to pick a topic and drench in it completely. Even though 2020 has been the most unusual year with a very un unheard of vibe, very uncommon per se, the topic for this year is as usual and as common as it gets. But it would be almost unfair not to have this as the pioneer topic. It is utero-vaginal prolapse. It is a very conventional problem affecting all age groups with a truly multifactorial etiology. It comes wrapped in a staggering stigma in various degrees spread across the societal hierarchy. This delay in intervention is what makes it worse than it is. This year, we have come up with a new venture. It is our absolute highlight and we intend to make it a fairly consistent one. It's an exclusive mug YouTube channel our very own egalitarian online repository that will always be with us. So now this has a playlist to suit all your needs. It has classroom sessions, which make you go for one topic at great length. Similarly, it also has surgical sessions that you can see like in a crisp manner, step by step with the explanation playing in the backdrop. So I would like to say, please subscribe and share the more the merrier. As you have all logged in, you must have seen there is our fun lobby, which has all these options, which keep you, which will keep you engaged in case we can't, but I hope that doesn't happen. Also, please make a whale of the selfie corner. You must. And also you can get a glimpse of our last, uh, our last year's program. Also, you can get to know our faculty. Now much, without much further ado, let me thank all of you for being here with us once again. To kickstart the session, we have Dr. Deeksha Pandey, the lady with the keenest eye for detail, the voice of not just reason, but magic that causes the utmost wonder. Deeksha ma'am, over to you. Can I start? Yes. So a very warm welcome to all. A very warm welcome to all of you. So what I'm going to do in next 20 to 25 minutes is, this is called a bridge session, and which is going to be a custom, a tradition for every MUG conference year after year as and when we do it. The idea is that it's very nice to see what is ahead of us, what you are looking at in front of you. But I think the story is always incomplete if you don't know from where it all started. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take you to MUG 2019 and I want you to walk that bridge with me and enter MUG 2020 today. So the objective of this 20 minutes, what I'm going to say as a bridge session is just connecting the dots and nothing else. So last year in the month of July, this urogynecology course started, which is not just a course or a meeting or a conference. It's basically a feeling. It's, I say it is a new era to start with. 
and you all who all are part of mug one or mug 2.0 will realize that maybe five years or 10 years down the line that we have not just started a conference it's not just a simple conference it's a tradition which or a new era which has lots of love passion world-class academics we bring to you world-class surgical skills we teach you and the feeling is a uh, very festive and very happy feeling so when it started last year in the month of july it was it is not something that when we have such great dreams and such new thing we are going to do, it cannot just start in a, some small way. It has to always start with a blast. And I want to show you how it started. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you all from all the corners of the world. Thank you, sir. Uh, dear teachers, delegates and residents, to the first ever Manipal Urogynecology course 2019. Academic extravaganza studded with the demonstration of live surgeries by the most dynamic Dr. Christian, a live workshop by Dr. Catherine from the United States, hands-on training, many relevant, engaging lectures and whatnot. We are beyond happy to be the pioneers of this breakthrough event. And we sure hope that it becomes a tradition which becomes more rooted in our department and only gets stronger over the years. Urogynecology per se is very underdressed. The issues associated with it very underrated. The problems underdiagnosed, underdocumented, and we are here to change that. <laughs> I have no doubt in saying that he's among the very few best surgeons which I have ever seen in my life. His skills, his passion, and his energy are contagious. I have seen him all the time juggling with administrative work, patients, residents, OTs, and so many other things. But what I have never seen is a single streak of fatigue or irritation or stress on his face. That's what makes him an amazing person. <laughs> so this is how the story of Mark 2019 started. And after this short and sweet inauguration, uh, we went ahead with our workshop day and uh, then we have not done it in a very, we wanted to maximize the learning experience. So what we have done is that we have done one classroom session followed by related surgical uh, relay from directly from the OT. So the very first lecture was taken by Dr. Shri Padhebbar and that was on urogynecological anatomy. And I can assure you, we have uploaded it on YouTube. You must go and see this. And I don't think anywhere else urogynecology anatomy and the applied aspect of it has been shown so beautifully the way Shri Padhebbar said it for us last year. So the highlights, I will just be telling the points which I remember and I want all the delegates and all everybody who wants to learn urogynecology is there that uh, I'll be just pinpointing what I learned and I loved about it. So the summary of his lecture was he told with beautiful animations, cadaveric dissections and dummy surgeries, you can go and have a look as I told you in the YouTube channel. So the foundation of this year's urogynecology where we are going to have a theme as pelvic organ prelapse was laid last year by Dr. Hebbar sir and where he told the details of anatomy of prolapse principles of its repair and reconstructive surgery. He also told that in decades how prolapse surgery has evolved and reached to an entirely different level from hysterectomy to various kinds of hysteropexies. 
He also mentioned about um, stress uh, surgeries related to stress urinary incontinence and uh, the uh, difficulties or complexities of these surgeries in modern day urogynecology. The next session was um, related to urge incontinence where uh, this was one of the, I want to show the short video, little part of that video, because when we saw the feedback, this was one of the most liked video last year by the, and still in the YouTube that rates highest among um, most watched video by Dr. Christian Fundgeld. And- um, Do not inject near the urethra. We start in the trigonum. So first injection. Half a milliliter. Stop. The next. Stop. Stop. It's a very big needle. Yes, Rita. The next. Press. Okay. So this was how that wonderful <laughs> surgery went on. And the take home message is what Christian van Gil gave during the surgery and the discussion uh, that followed after the surgery. He told that there was a lot of controversy whether you should inject Botox in tri trigone or not. But he said he emphasized the point that it has to be injected in the trigonal area. Only important thing that we have to remember that we have to avoid ureteric orifices. All sites that should be injected, 20, approximately 20 injections, half ml each, and the total doses around 100 units for idiopathic bladder, which we as urogynecologists usually see in our practice. He also told that we have to, because there was a last needle prick cause little bleeding. So he said it is very imperative that we counsel our patient that she might have be having uh, a bloody urine for the next day. And uh, then the injection is repeat, uh, repeat injection is required after six to nine months, but sometimes patient with bladder drill combined after the Botox injection can, up, can work up to five years. I hope the video is working because uh, it is little problem from my side. I cannot see the screen completely. Is it working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it it's okay? Working, it's okay. working. Okay, so the take home message is that it uh, doesn't matter how many injections, what are the locations you are doing, it is exactly the same effect and very important point that whenever we are injecting Botox, one or two injections should be given at the trigonal area. After that, the session, this surgery was followed up by Dr. M. V. Pai, Murli Dharvi Pai, sir, our head of the department. Who this problem, about... even though it is bordering so many other urinary problems, it happens to be a most important and distressing problem for the patient. And then there are somatic nerves. So there has to be a perfect harmony between the somatic nerves and the autonomic nervous system. And then there are receptors on which these people play through their neurotransmitters. And these receptors are muscarinic receptors. You have to understand this clearly because I'm going to talk about this when I talk about treatment. So muscarinic is nothing but cholinergic receptors, then nicotinic receptors, and then there are alpha, beta, adrenergic receptors. Avoid diuretics and treat constipation. Antimuscarinics, that is anticholinergic drugs and Mira Begron, beta-3 agonist are the mainstay of drug treatment. So if you have, this... to, if you have to tell me what I uh, liked about this lecture and what everybody would have understood, that sir told a detailed pathophysiology. We I cannot put the entire video here. So this is just a stimulation that you go back to the YouTube channel and learn in detail about the pathophysiology, which was beautifully exchanged. Sir told about the receptors in bladder, various receptors. He also emphasized about the filling and voiding and interplay of sympathetic and parasympathetic system involved in that. Then risk factors and detailed evaluation of patient who present to us with overactive bladder. And he gave, it is very important, he gave emphasis on 
maintaining a bladder diary and checking the bladder diary of that patient before initiating the treatment. And definitely he emphasized at the end, the superiority of Mira background, which we are commonly using in our routine practice. And it is a very good drug, I must say. All of the delegates who are there uh, should keep that in mind that it is a wonderful drug and it helps a lot to the patients. Next, then we went to OT. Now, this is uh, something which is very important for March 2020 also. So uh, Dr. Fenfkel did two surgeries. So those were a sacrospinous hysteropexy. So we have today a total complete session dedicated uh, for hysteropexy, which will be taken by Dr. Catherine. And I uh, have known that Dr. Jennifer is an expert in various kinds of hysteropexy, so we can take her opinion also. But here, what we did last year, so there were two cases which were operated. One was done by the German system called Promedon, which is very costly for Indian standards because patients don't have insurance also here. And uh, so what we did, the second system was our homemade uh, innovation. So I'm just going to uh, show you in very short. Okay, I will time. demonstrate the products of the uterus. You can see the cervix, stage two. And when I remove the cervix, we have only a small sister seal. It's a procedure to uh, fix the apex or uh, the level one, uh, in this case, the uterus. Um, we feared uh, to use meshes in uh, so young patients. And so we can reduce the, the, the alloplastic implant to a small tape and to imitate the sacral spine as a uterus sacral ligament, the uterus sacral ligament. And in this region, I inject a little bit Saline. Okay. You can see it. This yes. Anchor. All of ah. you can see it. Everybody is nodding yes. here. And this anger I will implant. Yes, ma'am. Yes, macrophobus. A second stitch. This is being stitched to the cervix, center part of it. So, uh, I think uh, the cervix must be higher than the half of the length of the vagina. Okay. Then is the patient um, satisfied. So this was the first surgery what we did with the Promedon German system, I told you. But for Indian scenario, okay. we tried another thing because we say there is a very nice saying that when there is a will, there is a, a way. So though we did not have availability of that system to us, so the same technique, technique remained exactly the same. We borrowed the instrument from orthopedics people uh, because of uh, our personal relations with them. This is the instrument which is used for shoulder arthroscopy in orthopedics, and it was demonstrated by them that day. And then this is the tape which we use for uh, obturator approach of tension-free vaginal taping. It is a very cheap tape which comes at around, it is Indian Lotus Company sells it for around 5,000 rupees. So this system we uh, used in the second case of sacrospinous hysteroscopy and achieved exactly the same results as with the other German system. So the take home message from these two cases, what we learned is that two different kind of procedures were done with two different systems. And what he was telling, trying to emphasize that when this FDA um, warnings came in 2008 and 2011 about meshes, so people started using uh, less material, alloplastic material to reduce the amount of alloplastic material use. These same have come into practice. And following these two cases, we had a lot of audience interaction about mesh erosions, about plane of mesh implants, about dyspareunia, about hysperonia, about prophylactic antibiotic sutures. And it went on so much so that we reached what happens if this patient becomes pregnant, how to deliver it, and what happens is later on, for some other reason, this patient requires hysterectomy. So all aspects. So it was a wonderful discussion done that day. I hope 
in audience, all those people who were actively involved were there today also. So remembering those nice days. Uh, so the next thing is, um, and next lecture was taken by Dr. Priya Balal, and it was on recurrent cystitis, a nice lecture was taken. And then uh, she told very important things about the recurrent cystitis and cystitis per se, that whenever there is pus in urine, it is not always infective. There can be non-infective cystitis. Then she also touched upon complicated versus uncomplicated cystitis, detailed management, with what is the difference between managing a case of acute versus recurrent cystitis that was emphasized, role of prophylactic antimicrobials. I'm just going to show you a table what she presented. And the most um, happy thing about her lecture was she reassured us that 95% of cases of recurrent cystitis are preventable, which makes us very hopeful, very optimistic, for a problem which always scares us when patient keeps on coming we don't know what to do but when we know that something can be done in 95 percent cases are preventable that's a big hope so this is the thing i took it from dr priya balal's lecture and she told about the prophylaxis for long-term everyday prophylaxis to self-start therapy to post coital prophylaxis. I think this really works for us in our clinic. And I hope all of you can understand this and start using this. Then was my lecture on stress urinary incontinence. I was totally in a zombie mode that day. I think more concerned about organizing the things rather than focusing on the lecture. I'm not sure how good a job I did, which was given to me. But yes, I, as I always tell that uh, stress urinary incontinence is, is not a diagnosis which is made by investigation and examination. It is a diagnosis which is made just by complaint. And as soon as the patient complains, the first line therapy that is pelvic floor muscle training can be started. I told about what details you take in history from those patients. I told what investigations and what examination are outdated, which should not be done and focused on those, which are very few investigations and examination we have to do. And still though, after the warning has, uh, FD has given warning, there is a lot of controversy at a global level, but we know that till today, at least also in 2020, we are living in the era of mid urethral tapes. And the gold standard is tension-free vaginal trap, either retropubic approach or obturator approach. This lecture was followed by the surgery from the OT. And this was the first time in Manipal we used a retropubic approach. And uh, I'm very happy to say that after we did this in March 2019, we have done many, last year we did many TVT retropubic approach successfully. And with our happy patients, I think a lot, 10 or 12 TVT retropubic approach we have done. So that was the effect of Mark 2020 on us. The incontinence. Please let the patient cut. No, no. Spine. More? More? Ah. You saw the incontinence. Uh, uh, first time? Again. 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 Again? Okay. To move the urethra to the other side, a pin set, a, a, a forceps, I go to the, in my tunnel, Remove your speculum. I go inside with my index finger and I go around the urethra and then only in direction above, along the backside of the bone to my incisions. So this is how it happened. The incon. And um, uh, so he, he told that how his practice, Dr. Fungal told us that when he started, they were all doing in early 2000 TVT procedures only then because of the increased complications, which were uh, like immediate complication, TVT O came into practice, but now because seeing the efficacy and seeing the long-term complications of both the procedure, they are mostly doing now TVT retropubic approach. And we also feel that for a certain group of people who have severe degree of urinary incontinence or who have 
um, who are very obese, actually, I also personally feel that retropubic approach is much better. So technical details were discussed and a simple technical improvisation, uh, which is uh, Dr. Fungal's innovation, actually, which we have started practicing. And we have sent a, a paper also with our experience with this innovative technique of tape, tape adjustment, which has been done with Dr. Prandeep and Dr. Vashnavi, if they are there. They have sent it for publication and I'm happy to say that it has been ex, uh, accepted in a European journal. Soon it will be there uh, online also. Then coming then, to the, then um, um, it was, uh, um, I want to uh, tell you in between what them. happened. We had asked feedback from people. And today also I want all of you in the lobby, you can go and give your feedbacks. We will be anxiously and happily waiting for any negative and positive feedbacks from your side. And I promise you that next year, we'll try to improve on that as we have done from 2019 to this year. So very happily, I want to say that when we calculated the score on a scale of 10, we were scored nine on an average, nine on 10. And everybody said that the organization was very good and the team enthusiasm. I think almost everybody loved the team enthusiasm. And there were uh, people were impressed with the live surgeries we relate from directly from OT and the discussion that followed. That interaction was very important and everybody got a chance. And I um, request you all today to again, there is a tab in the main uh, auditorium. Ask a question, you please. Uh, we will feel very happy. Uh, the more questions we can answer today also. But yes, there was some negative part of uh, also there. Everybody said that it was too long even for one day. And to tell you the truth, we all were also dead tired by the end of the day. So when we were planning MUC 2019, we thought that we'll divide it into two days. But you know, the things did not work out because of the pandemic that way. So again, we have time restriction today, but uh, we'll try to uh, minimize the uh, output we are giving so that uh, it is a compact program, but maybe next year the situations become better. We'll do a two or three days program next year. And then uh, there were some negative feedbacks that the lunch was not good, the seats were not comfortable. So this time it is all managed well. You can sit at your home in the most comfortable couches at your home and you can eat the best lunch you want to eat, your preference. So that also has been, God has taken care of that also. There were less signposts. That was one of the comment last year. So at this time, I thank Mohit, Rana, Kroshan and the technical team that I hope these time our delegates are not facing that kind of difficulty that uh, from where to where we have to go. If in case you all are having any problem, please feel free to post it in the WhatsApp delegate group. We'll try to help you as soon as possible in that. Then uh, came the next session. I call it courtroom and controversies. Actually, this, uh, this was my idea. I have not been able to do it properly. Uh, like this, it was inspired by one of the Indian shows, we call it Aapki Adalat. So in this, uh, he is a very nice guy, Dr. Rajat Sharma. He calls on important people and asks them, uh, puts them in uh, the courtroom and asks them why they did what people did not understand, the reason why they have behaved in a particular manner or why they are practicing in a particular manner. So I thought I wanted to discuss about mesh in prolapse. I want. I also wanted to discuss about colpoclesis in modern day gynecology and urogynecology role of that. But because of the language barrier and because of uh, uh, because of the time constraints, we cannot do it in a courtroom way. Uh, but someday, maybe 2021, 2022, I definitely want to do this session exactly as Dr. Rajat Sharma does. And it is called Aapki Adalat. We'll do it in the same way. But when I was looking back the videos and uh, seeing the pictures, actually, Dr. Hebbar could do that exactly, could take us to the same level where uh, he is questioning uh, and Dr. Fenkild in a very polite way that uh, why he's doing that. And with a lot of happiness and patience, he was answering all his questions. And it simulated something like Aapki Adalat. But uh, yeah, I promise you in years to come, we'll be doing this. will be a very magical session. And we'll keep half day or at least two hours only dedicated to this kind of session. So Dr. Fenkild took, instead of this courtroom, he took a lecture 
on mesh for prolapse. And he told that what happened in, this is important to understand that in European societies, what has happened in European Urogynecology and European Urology Association, they saw, they reviewed all the data with mesh and without mesh with native tissue. And they found that the recurrence rate in the group, which was without mesh, six times more high recurrence was seen. So they have a very political statement they have issued. I will say it, it is like, a little political statement that meshes are indicated where native tissue repair have already failed or is expected to fail. So you decide which patient you can think uh, and they have not given clear cut guidelines, but it is up to you that decide if it is going to fail, you better put a mesh there. Then by that time, I think everybody, you can see the faces, everybody was tired and it was a porcelain session and everybody was feeling like really sleepy that time and suddenly something happened. Do you want to see what happened? <laughs> This is what I call as a team spirit, and I'm really proud of my team. I just want to say with this video that I really love you all. I loved you in 2019. I love, love you today. And you will always be a very important wherever I go, wherever I am. This team remains a, like a family to me. And I thank you all for, make this, for making this. Okay, uh, thank you all. Okay, is it better? Am I audible? Okay, so uh, mesh repair for prolapse, that was after the session. Uh, is it okay? Can you hear me? This is, okay, so uh, this was the surgery which was done by Christian van Gil showing a mesh repair. In the case of native tissue, I prepare here. And this- uh, Beautiful dissections, you can see. mesh uh, repair more uh, near the bladder. because I suspend with the mesh, the bladder and the cervix. And we have apical fixation and a distal fixation. Okay. And we have uh, in four sides because there is no additional lateral fixation. Okay. And um, this in four sides, um, it's a new uh, white line, the new Argus tendineus. Huh? Actually, God was preparing us for this virtual kind of conference even last year. So we had to uh, use more things like that to get Catherine, uh, Dr. Catherine Matthews from United States. And she showed us a beautiful video of uh, colpoclesis and step-by-step -step demonstration of the same. And so you have two options. It. So uh, after that was the quiz session. And uh, this will tell you how our quiz went because it was totally late and everybody was tired. And I think even the participants were tired. So most of the time we had a preliminary round which was internet based and then the game show, show that day. Uh, but uh, this is just uh, how, I, we don't even have pictures of that uh, quiz session because what happened that um, even our photographer and videographer have left by that time because everybody was exhausted, but uh, you can have, you can see what you have two there. options. Option A is to stay with your wife for the rest of your life. Option B, 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 I choose B. You have two options. Option A is to stay with your wife for the rest of your life. Option B, 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 I choose B. You have two options. So I think people were um, uh, behaving like that. 
So we did not keep quiz this year because uh, everybody was ready to choose option B. Um, but it's okay. We thought we'll do an innovation R, but because of this kind of change environment, we could not do that. That's okay. And it was not just the conference day. Even we have a lot of fun and a lot of learning during a pre-conference and post-conference sessions. You can see these are some of the pictures during our live workshop uh, where um, uh, Dr. Hebbar is teaching and all. Everybody's learning how uh, bladder repair is done, which is very important to understand if you are a urogynecologist. And uh, he taught about perineal trauma and perineal repairs also was discussed and everybody was made to do it in animal um, skins and animal tissues. And this is some of the memories, beautiful memories of our pre-conference uh, gala dinner. And we had a lot of festivities this year. We'll definitely miss this, but hope next year things become normal and we are able to um, go back to this mode again. So I'll try that, but I really miss this festivity uh, in today's meeting. Now, after that, let's know where we are going. So MUC 2020, I say it is just the second, it is next, it is just a step, next step in the journey because we have to go a long way. So what we are planning in this is we have to important, whatever we plan 10 years down the line, wherever Mug goes, but I think it is very important that we remain focused to what our vision has been. And our vision is improvement in the quality of care of women with pelvic floor disorders by training the generation next in a world-class manner. That is our vision and we should never forget that. We can do many things there, but the vision remains same year after year. So what happens, the change in strategy? Uh, so um, I'm a little optimistic kind of person. So till May, June, I was still telling everybody, all the international speakers, I was telling that I think things will be okay and we'll plan it, we'll plan it. Maybe we'll be able to have a physical MUC conference in the month of November. It is few months still, the situations will improve. But with a very heavy heart in mid of August, I had to take this decision that MUC 2020 is going virtual. It really broke my heart. But as they say that every cloud has a silver lining. And I think something really ama amazing happened because of this virtual nature of our conference. And I'm happy and there is a virtual clap for our globalization first step towards globalization that we have today people from Singapore, Nepal, Lebanon, Malaysia, um, Egypt, Germany, United Kingdoms, and United States. And I special welcome to all of you. Uh, maybe your time zones are different, as Sugriti mentioned, uh, but we are really happy to have you here with us today. And it was only possible, I think, uh, with the virtual nature of the conference today. And Turkey also. Okay, so the highlights what we planned because we keep on innovating every year. That's what we think we are doing. So uh, a very important part of uh, this, if you have seen the prom promotional videos, there were innovation hour and one live workshop where we wanted you all to do surgeries in uh, Miyazaki model and a life size model, but it could not happen this day. But instead of that, we have started our a YouTube channel, I think that is going to help you a lot in learning uh, theoretical knowledge as well as the surgeries. The theme of this year is prolapse. Uh, so the idea is first time we had all the topics and this year onwards, we are planning to have one topic in year and have the in-depth understanding of all those cases. Though after my uh, making the program also, I was thinking that we cannot actually even two days are less to take all the aspects of prolapse, but we'll try our level best to touch upon each and everything bit by bit. So I'm saying that this uh, virtual thing taught us one more thing that it need not be one day where everybody comes from everywhere and we do something. Rather, it can be an year of learning. Let it not be just a day. Let Mark 2020 be an year of learning and uh, we want to have your ideas so please write in your feedback feedback form if you have any idea how we can have this ongoing learning experience throughout there and maybe we can have some workshops where you can do in or three people according to your convenience you can come here and we can have small groups and we can uh, 
uh, clustered our cases that time. We can take you to OT or our OPD and learn something. We have procured uh, the Miyazaki model also here. If you want to learn surgeries, you can come here and we can uh, help you learn and do the surgeries itself on this model. Tomorrow we will show how this beautiful model looks like and how we do it. So uh, with this, I thank you all. Happy learning and um, let's have fun.